All right, so uh, we're going to do part two here of uh, chapter nine's notes. So in the first section, we talked about a uh, parabola, what it looks like, and how to shift it up and down, and what happens if it's opening up or opening down. Uh, so we're going to review some of that stuff today, but we're going to put more into the mix here because uh, yesterday or the day before uh, when we were doing this, we were only dealing with functions that look something like this. So in other words, we were missing our middle term. So now we're going to look at functions that have a middle term and how this works. So again, this is going to be a brief overview. Uh, play this over again if you need to, but uh, let's just go through this. So here are some of the properties of a quadratic function. We know that it's going to open up if our a is positive. We talked about that in the previous video. It's going to open down if a is negative. We talked about that. Okay, we know that if uh, we know that uh, comparing it, and this is just a principle that we didn't really get into a lot of detail of, but we know that if uh, a the the absolute value of a, or if that number a, regardless of whether it's negative or positive, if it's greater than one, we know that it's going to be skinnier than a normal x squared graph, and if it's less than one, like a fraction or a decimal, it's going to be wider than a regular x squared graph. Okay, now here's the new property that we need to talk about. So we talked about vertex briefly, but the vertex for all of these were always ending up on the x-axis. So it has uh, an axis of symmetry. We did talk about that. Okay, that should be axis of symmetry. This is how we find it, negative b over 2a. So using the numbers that are in front of these, and we're going to talk about that today, it has a vertex whose x-coordinate is that negative b over 2a, and we're going to call the y-intercept will be c. Okay, so whatever that last value is will be your uh, will be your y intercept. Now, all of these are good good properties to know, but again, we want to think through these logically. The most important thing we're going to talk about today is the vertex and finding the vertex. So, once we find the vertex, it's fairly easy to graph. So, let's just get right into it. Using our equation right here, x equals negative b or opposite of b over 2a. Here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to identify our a is negative 2, that's the negative 2, b is equal to 8, and c is equal to negative 1. So let's start there. So now to find the axis of symmetry, that will be, remember, that is the imaginary line, the dot, 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 dot line that cuts our parabola in half. Okay, so this right here is like an axis of symmetry. How we find the x value of this point right here, that's our axis of symmetry, is going to be using this formula. x equals negative b over 2a. We're going to leave this negative here and plug in exactly what we see. Negative and then our b is 8 over 2 times a negative 2. So this means we have negative 8 over negative 4. Divide that we get a positive 2. So x equals 2 is our axis of symmetry. Now with that axis of symmetry, what we're going to do is we're going to simply plug that into our function to figure out the vertex. I already know that our vertex, we have to have an x and a y coordinate for our vertex. I know the x value for sure is 2 because of our axis of symmetry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this 2 into this equation up here. So negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 1. So this is 4, this is negative 8, plus 16, minus 1 is equal to 7. So 2 comma 7 is our vertex. When we graph our function, we will always put the vertex in the center. We don't need to show our work there, we already did that. There's our vertex. Now what we'll do is we'll just pick values on both sides. 0, 1 is to the left of 2, and 3 and 4 is to the right of 2. And then literally all we're going to do is plug these values in to get what our parabola looks like. Plug in 0. So negative 2 times 0 squared plus 8 times 0 minus 1. You can put that right into a calculator. That's negative 8 plus 0, or sorry, 0 plus 0 minus 1 
is negative 1. So we have 0 comma negative 1 is one of our values. Okay? Move to the next one. Negative 2 times 1 squared plus 8 times 1 minus 1. So we have negative 2 plus 8 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. So we have 1 comma 5 is one of our values. We already did 2 comma 7. So again, we're going to plot that up here somewhere. That's our vertex, which means that either has to be the high or the low point. And what you guys will find is if you go right in order like this, when we plug in 3, we should get the exact same value that's right here. So negative, uh, 3 plus 8 times 3 minus 1. So this is 9, negative 18, plus 24 is uh, 6, minus 1 is 5. We should get the exact same values. So when I plug these in, they're like a mirror image. How do I know that? Because our axis of symmetry goes straight down like this. So everything will be exactly the opposite on the other side and then we can draw our parabola. And again, we're gonna have plenty of time to work on this in class, but this is just to give you a brief overview about how this works. Uh, keep this video short and just give you a nice little overview. Again, rewatch it if you need to understand. The axis of symmetry will be found the same way every single time, and then the vertex will be found the same way every time, and that's our starting point on graphing. Okay, so um, again, if there uh, has been an Edmodo quiz, uh, assigned, make sure you do that. Uh, otherwise, I will uh, see you in class and bring questions there. See you then.